So, for this, we will determine the economic order quantity and how to compute it and what is the purpose of this. So, the purpose of the economic order quantity or EOQ um, is that the purchase order which results in the minimum total inventory cost. In determining the quantity to be ordered, the cost of placing an order and the cost of carrying inventory must be considered. So, the, so there are two points to be considered here. First is your ordering cost. Second is your carrying cost. So let's de determine first um, what is the formula for EOQ. But before jumping that, before before jumping to the determination of, of the formula, let's first um, discuss this. So for EOQ, um, the concept of this is to for us to determine um, the cheapest price for um, for the cost of the inventory. I mean the um, the ordering cost as well as the carrying cost. Where will you be able to reap maximum benefits? Okay, so you have to determine first your annual units required. So this is for this one. Let's just table it as A. And then determine your ordering cost. So ordering cost, this, not, this does not mean, um, um, this may seem um, small amount, but in reality, ordering cost refers to the um, costs that are attributable to insurance, taxes, um, back and, um, um, those costs that refer to the um, back office. So example of this are your cost of placing and receiving orders, like cost of processing documents, insurance for shipments, and unloading costs. So this is a one-time thing, okay? This is a one-time cost. So every time you order, um, this is the equivalent cost, okay? So in this case, uh, for this order, you, you will spend 30 pesos, okay? So you're carrying cost per unit. So the component of this one, um, this includes your cost of storage, insurance, inventory taxes, obsolescence, spoilage and pilferage, pilferage, pilferage or theft, opportunity cost of funds tied up with the inventory and handling costs. Okay, so now that we've known this, we can now plot our um, EOQ formula. Let's put this, let's label ordering cost as OC and carrying cost or handling cost as CC. Okay, so now that we know um, our inputs, let's now put, let's now place it in the formula. So EOQ is equivalent to the square root of um, 2 times your annual units required. And then the product of this would be multiplied to the ordering cost, your OC. And your numerator would be divided with your carrying cost per unit or your CC. Okay, so now we this is already our uh, plotted formula. Let's now compute. Let's now replace it with the actual figures. So our EOQ is equals to two two times four thousand eight hundred your annual units times your ordering cost. 30 pesos all over your carrying cost per unit which is 1.25 so let's multiply first 2 times 4,800 it is 9,600 multiplied by 30 all over 1.25 okay so 96 times 30 288 okay here you will get 288 divided by 1.25 you will get 230 400 and the square root for this would be 480 okay so you might be wondering, um, sir, what is the significance of the 480? What is this? Is this peso or this is 
um, in units. Okay? So this one is in a per unit basis. Okay? Unit. What is the meaning of this? This means that this should be the this this should be the this should be the quantity of units that 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 you should order in order to reap the benefits of the ordering cost and carrying costs. When you order this one, you will get the least the the least ordering and carrying cost. Understood? So in Filipino, we call this sulitin mo makakatipid ka sa ordering carrying cost kapag 480 units ang in order mo. Okay? So now that we've determined the EOQ, let's now um, answer the following questions. How many orders are made each year? So the formula for this is um, you divide your annual units required, your letter A, with your EOQ. Okay? So letter A divided by EOQ. So you will get um, your, your annual units required is, sorry, this should not be in peso. So this should, both of these should be in peso. So your annual units required is 4,800 per year divided by your EOQ, you would get 10. Okay? Oh, sorry. Um, your EOQ, yeah, you would get um, how many orders are made each year? You, you will order 10 times. Okay? You will order 10 times um, for the year for, for you to be able to satisfy your annual units required. Okay? Since every time you order, you only purchase 480 units, you have to do it 10 times in order to satisfy this requirement. Okay? So for the second question, what is the frequency of placing an order? So you multiply this with your year, with the total days for a year, which is 360 days. Okay? divided by 10, you would have to purchase every 36 days. Okay? So, when they ask what would be the total ordering costs, um, the formula for that would be your number of orders per year. Okay? This one, multiplied by your ordering cost. So, you're, um, as I have said a while ago, your, the ordering cost is a one is a one time payment per order. So, whatever the annual units required is, okay. Um, let's say this is just um one hundred units or let's say one million units, but um um the factor here is um the the ordering cost which is a st straight line payment. Okay, this is a one time cost. So you multiply your ordering cost by your um, um, how many orders are made each year so you have here 10 times you order 10 times and the ordering cost is 30 you will get 300 pesos okay so that is your total ordering cost for you to for you to um, satisfy your annual units required okay so for your total carrying costs the formula for that would be your average inventory multiplied by your cost per unit okay so it, for you to get your average inventory you 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 average this you average your your eoq and how do you average it you mult, you divide this by two okay so um one formula here is eoq divided by two okay so let's just replace it 480 divided by 2 okay times 1.25 your carrying cost per unit again per unit okay so the answer would, there would be 240 times 1.25 you will get 300 pesos as well okay so um the final the final question what is the total inventory cost? 
you just add your total ordering cost as well as with your total carrying cost you would get 600 pesos okay so wrap up for this what is the significance of eoq because this has been um used for almost a for more than a hundred years okay so the significance of this is that you're you were able to determine that for your annual units required for 4,800 units um, of, of, of inventory that you need, um, you have um, your total inventory cost or to, or to purchase this is you just going to spend 600 pesos of that. And that will only happen. You will only uh, have to spend 600 pesos if your EOQ is 480 units per order. Understood? So also... The significance of the EOQ is a trigger for your reorder point. Okay, so we all know the concept of reorder point that um, um, when our when the stock is nearing is nearing or already equal to the reorder point or safety stock, it is um, it is calling for us that we should place our order. Okay, and considering the lead time. reorder point so a while ago we've determined the concept of eoq so this is the continuation of the determination the determination of eoq so once the eoq has been determined management must decide when to place the order and the order point must be established if the lead time and if the lead time and the inventory usage are known determination of the order point is easy so lead time is the period between the placement of the order and the receipt of the materials ordered. While inventory usage rate is the quantity of materials used in production over a period of time. The order point should be where the inventory level reaches the number of units that would be, that would be consumed during the lead time. So let's assume the following facts. Um, Let's assume that the expected daily usage of an item of material is 100 units. This one, your daily usage. Okay. And the anticipated lead time is 4 days. Okay. You have your lead time 4 days. So, and our EOQ is 500. So, when you multiply this one, it suggests that in 4 days time, um, or sorry, if... If you divide your EOQ with, with your daily usage, it would suggest that in five days, it would be um, unavailable or out of stock, right? So this is where the reorder point enters. So um, the formula for the order point is is your daily usage multiplied by your lead time okay so let's just supply we have 100 units times 4 days we have 400 units okay so what does this mean this simply means that um for you to order um for you to for you not to have shortage in stock because you only have an eoq 500 and your lead time is for four days again the definition of lead time is the period between the placement of the order and the receipt of the materials ordered so it suggests that your supplier when you order to him let's say it is january 1 today um, when you place your order in January 1, you will only receive it on January 4. So, there is a uh, time gap of 4 days for you to receive your 500 um, units ordered. Okay? So, it's, it states that um, when your, when your um, inventory level is now at, at the 400 unit mark, okay? 
or when the inventory level of materials is reduced to 400 units, an order should be placed for 500 units or your EOQ. Okay? Let's say that um, it, today is um, January 1. Okay? On January 1, um, your, EO, your inventory level was still 500. Okay? And you know that your daily usage is 100 a day. So on January 2, your usage or your inventory level is just 400. Okay? So this would be your trigger point on January 2. You're, you now have to make, you have now to place, uh, you, have, you now have to call your supplier for you to, to, to order 500 units of your materials inventory. Because if you, because if you're late, if you order on January 3, which is now just 300, you won't have sufficient um, inventory for January 6. Right? Because if you call here, if you call on this date, and then count four days, one, two, three, four, your your order would um would um you would receive your order on January six, so you will not be, you will now be having again five hundred units. But then again, if you are late, if you call on January three instead of January two, um count four days from January three. One, one, two, three, right? You would have a an a stock here. It would be unavailable. So thus. Um, your production would be disrupted and no sales would be generated. Okay? So that's the trigger of um, the EOQ. After EOQ, you would be able to determine your order point. And in your order point, um, you use these two factors, your daily usage as well as your lead time.